right, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Dave Mirsch. Uh, I am the practice leader here at Rebelwood uh, for all things Workday Adaptive Planning. Joining me is Ben Hart from Texans Credit Union. We'll be doing a little bit of a discussion of their time with Adaptive. But before we do that, I'd like to have Ben do a quick intro about himself. So, Ben? Yeah, thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Ben Hart, like you had mentioned, uh, Chief Financial Officer here at Texans Credit Union. We've been here Oh, for a little over three years. Um, prior to that, I was CFO at Texas Tech uh, Federal Credit Union out in Lubbock. I'm a proud Red Raider. Um, <laughs> and prior to, prior to that, I worked for the NCUA, which is like the regulatory arm for credit unions um, for about 15 years. was deputy director of supervision for what was used to be called Region 4. Now it's called the Southern uh, Region. Uh, and I cut my teeth as a credit union examiner. So out of, out of right out of school, I was a field examiner for credit unions and um, got a great education looking at how credit unions are ran out in the, out in the marketplace and uh, 20 plus years of experience in, in credit unions. Awesome. And, and, and with that time within credit unions, you know, what, what part of that really got you into the FP&A space? Yeah. You know, I think um, in our line of work, um, being able to project financial performance is, is crucial, right. And trying to be as accurate as possible. Um, I think a lot of times if you are projecting your financial performance and you sandbag, if you will, if you <laughs> under project, you miss out on a lot of opportunities that maybe right. some of your peers get to take advantage of. Uh, that's always interested me uh, is trying to project uh, the financial future. If you can, well, just as best as I possibly can. Um, I've always gravitated towards that. Great. Awesome. Now with Texans credit, you know, I'd like to hear a little bit more about, the, the credit union itself, um, you know, you know, a little bit about that. And also what kind of led you to start getting into the realm of we need some type of solution to help us with our FP&A planning? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we're about a $2.2 billion uh, institution. Uh, annual revenue is around $93 million. We have an operating expense budget of about 45 um, million dollars. And of course, um, in our line of work, we buy and sell cash like all credit unions and banks. So we have an interest expense associated with that too. Right now it's running about, about $24 mm -hmm. million, dollars, kind of give sure. you an idea of our size and skill. So um, in credit union land, I guess we're kind of considered to be a little larger than average um, in the FI space. I, I would consider still somewhat, somewhat small. Uh, we were chartered back in the 1950s to serve uh, Texas Instruments, employees of Texas Instruments, and they're still our primary seg, but have reached out into some of the communities here in the DFW market, the Dallas-Fort Worth market as well. Great. Awesome. Awesome. And, and is there anything you, know, you can speak to about the uniqueness of credit unions, budget services in general when it comes to FP&A? I know you mentioned that, you know, you know, buying and selling cash obviously has a little complexity with it, I'm sure. Is there anything else about that that kind of really drives complexity and uniqueness in your in your world? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I don't know if it's exclusive to credit unions, but we're highly dependent on what's going on in the marketplace, specifically um, the risk free rate, the Treasury, uh, the yield curve and what's what's the price and the cost of cash right now and how mm -hmm. can we sell it in the form of loans and make a margin um, we're a thin margin business. Um, I think that's largely because we sell the most commoditized product there is, and that's cash. That's more commoditized <laughs> than livestock, oil. I'm a West Texas person, so I have oil, cotton, a lot of these commodities you think of. I mean, cash is more commoditized than that. So uh, margins are thin, so the room for error is is minimal. And so you really have to be able to project and forecast just as best as you possibly can. Right. Gotcha. And uh, yeah, I know you're you're a Texas Dallas guy, uh, you know, Cowboys fan. I'm a I'm an Eagles guy, yeah. uh, based out of Philadelphia. Unfortunately, adapt doesn't allow me to project winnings of the teams. <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna give you a hard time today about the the Cowboys versus the Eagles, but as of yes last weekend with the yeah. loss to the Jets, I really can't do that today. So I'm gonna <laughs> forego that. Um, but okay. I was not able to predict that outcome correctly. So. <laughs> Hopefully next time we'll have a better conversation about there that. There you go. No, fair enough. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, you're getting into the budgeting forecasting process that you guys had at Texas Credit Union. Um, obviously, with the complexities, 
you know, what was the process for you guys before you moved into a tool like Adaptive? What was the old world like? Yeah. Yeah. The old world was uh, painful. <laughs> Lots of manual spreadsheets linked together. Um, the visuals to tell the story about the budget were also based in Excel. Um, lots of manual inputs, lots of room for human error, to be quite honest, uh, very difficult to pivot. So if we're wanting to change the assumption on where we think, say, the borrowing cost is going to be in month eight of the model, uh, very painful to go get that done. You could do it, but it was just, um, you know, myself and my team would have to block off <laughs> a day on their calendar, right, right. to go get that uh, put together. So right. pretty a pretty manual, painful process, to be honest. Right. And and how long would you say the standard, let's just say the standard budget process, let alone a reforecast process, what was the timeline for that? Like how long would it take you to do that in in in, in that in that set, uh, setup? Yeah, I mean, it would vary. So, so I would say like our use case is say, uh, I'm in an executive meeting with our CEO and our, our chief's team maybe with the board and they're asking, Hey, what, what's going to happen to our forecast? If loan growth isn't 10% next year, it's 8%. Um, that would be a painful process to go forecast that out under our old system. If you will, if, even, even if you want to call it a system, I mean, it was just a series of Excel spreadsheets. Now I can do that on my own or a member of the, my team can do that. Um, probably just like a couple, maybe a couple of hours of work at the most. Right. Um, it, it's much more, I mean, it's kind of in the name. It's much more adaptable. Yeah. <laughs> if you will. Yes. So like, what was, you know, what really led you to kind of that tipping point? Yeah. Uh, per se, as far as going from that to now going to adaptive, what, and what really made you choose adaptive to begin with? Yeah. So um, I had experience with adaptive uh, at, my prior uh, employer when I was a CFO at Texas Tech Credit Union, that was a solution that we had onboarded uh, mm -hmm. while I was there. Um, I got here in July, 2020, and like I mentioned, knew we needed to upgrade our system, um, our forecasting system, our budgeting system. Um, to be honest, I kind of went with adaptive because it's what I knew and I needed to move fast. Um, but I, I've always liked the program. What I like the most about it is, is its scalability. Um, the credit union I was at, we were, before I came here, we were a 300, $400 million balance sheet. Um, this is a $2.2 .2 billion balance sheet and it, it, it works and it's just as effective uh, as it would be if it was a $10 billion uh, balance sheet. So um, I like the program. One reason why I've gravitated towards it and brought it here to Texans is just because it's, it's very, you can customize it to meet your needs. Mm -hmm. um, the out of box solution isn't forced upon you. You can really build what you need. Uh, that does probably take a little bit more time up front, but I yep. think you get the benefit exponentially once once it's onboarded like you want. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, it, you know, there certainly are certain pieces of adaptive that come pre custom uh, pre built, not customized, but. To your point, the real the real value add is that that custom implementation that every client gets with Adaptive, um, and a lot of those benefits come with that customization. I know you and I talked previously about this before about some of the reporting mechanisms as well, as far as the ease of you know, you, you use that example before of of changing assumptions on the fly uh, during you know board presentation, or whatever. I you know, not to go on a tangent here, but I had a an experience. From a prior employer before I came to Rubblewood, I was a director of PA and I worked for a company that owned Adaptive. And we were sitting in a boardroom with our private equity owners, and they were asking me to change revenue and cost assumptions. And we had Adaptive, thankfully, because if we didn't have Adaptive, I would have had to go back, redo all my spreadsheets, copy and paste hundreds of slides back into PowerPoint. Um, and redo all that work. It would take a couple of days to do it, like you mentioned. Um, however, we had adaptive open on this on the shared screen, the conference room. We went in, made those changes to the assumptions. I hit refresh on my Office Connect reports and my PowerPoint, and we just kept the conversation going that way. So you're literally going from a, a few days of effort to, you know, you know, in some cases, you know, obviously a a 
few seconds uh, or a yeah. few minutes, uh, which is a, you know, definitely a, a much better option, I would say. <laughs> um, so that's good. So like, what what are some of the, you know, what are the main kind of pieces you use for adapt on, on like a day-to-day basis? Yeah. Um, you know, in it pretty often. So we do have our product profitability built in outside of our balance sheet, income mm-hmm. statement, forecast, budget. We also have product profitability built into adaptive. So I'm looking at that pretty often. I'm looking at our contribution to margin per product, uh, per we, what we, we also slice and dice it by credit tier. So like what is a auto loan that's in the the credit score of, I don't know, 650. What is the contribution to margin that product is giving us uh, today to mm-hmm. make sure that we're priced appropriately? You know, it's we've been in a rising rate environment for 18 months now and pricing loans has been very important. So we've leaned on adaptive to help us make sure that we're getting the return on each one of our products that we expect and that what we want. Um, the other piece I really like about it is, the, the, the dashboard uh, piece, it's really easy to create visual visualizations on the fly and compare a baseline forecast to uh, maybe a stress forecast. Uh, for example, uh, what if cost of funds goes up 20% uh, more than what you projected three months ago? I mean, I can quickly, easily, like you mentioned, show a board member um through a visualization, what the impact that type of assumption or that type of stress would do to our revenue stream. So I find that very, very helpful. Uh, Where in the past, again, that would have been uh, quite a bit of work and maintenance before I could give um, our stakeholders any answers. Right. And, you know, the, 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 what if scenarios obviously is always a big part of that as well, where you can lock down certain versions of those forecasts, which makes it, it makes it a little bit helpful as opposed to having dozens of Excel files saved out there. Um, so how could you compare the old process to the, to the new process? Is it, is it comparable in any, in any way? Uh, no, it, it's, <laughs> it's not comparable at all. I, I, you know, when you're working in static spreadsheets, it's just very difficult to share work with team members. Um, one thing I do when I'm working in adaptive, I'll have three or four instances opened, right? So maybe I'll have a balance sheet income statement forecast opened. I'll have a key ratios page opened, and then I'll go change an assumption in one instance and then go refresh all those pages. And I can immediately see what's going to happen to our income statement what's going to happen to some of those key ratios our board members like to monitor if um, this assumption is tweaked in any way. And, you know, it's not what I have really, it's helped me gain more institutional knowledge to our book of business uh, by knowing what would happen to our margins if, if I stress cost of funds by by 20% or, or whatever. That's been very helpful. It's, it's not necessarily that I think that's what's going to happen. It's, I know what the impact would be if it did did happen. Mm-hmm. And I think our board and our stakeholders have comfort uh, in that fact. Awesome. Now, I know you mentioned, you know, one of the best parts about Adaptive for you has been the customization of, of the system. You have some background with Adaptive previously, but uh, a lot of that customization was done with a partner with Rebelwood. Yes. Um, so tell me a little bit about your relationship with Rebelwood as far as you know how that process was for you, uh, what you know, what you really wanted us to take a take the lead on. Uh, because oftentimes for our implementations, we want to have a kind of a shared approach where we want you guys to have some hands-on experience with it so that you can become self-sufficient like you already are, um, to to own your own instance. But you know, tell me a little bit about you know what Rebel really brought for you guys to the table. Yeah, for sure. Uh, when we brought the solution on, I was the only one enterprise wide that had, had experience uh, with adaptive. And I wouldn't say I'm a power user uh, by no means. I'm, I'm probably above average, but not a power user. Um, I, we needed a shot in the arm to get the budgeting component done quickly. We wanted to use it for our 2023 budget. And so we had a pretty t- tight time frame. Uh, to get it uploaded and, and and onboarded the way that we needed it to in order to do our 2023 budget. Um, and so, yeah, we reached out to a partner, Revelwood, to help us build it. Um, we could have done it internally, but it would have been, it, it would have taken us a much longer uh, t- time frame than it would have 
if we wouldn't have engaged with you guys. What I appreciated most about Revelwood is kind of you guys kind of brought us along on the on the path as we were building out um, this in the solution for us. Um, those engineers you guys have helping us were really kind of training us at the same time, training my team on how to build custom accounts, how to write. Uh, in the, it, it, I wouldn't say it's coding, but just writing formulas in the mm -hmm. system. Um, I found that very beneficial. So we got a lot of training <laughs> on yeah. the way as we were kind of building our, our program out. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, you're referring to what I call our knowledge transfer process and, and, Every client that we have, when we when we do our, our kickoff, I'm sure you probably saw it at some point early on, has like our, our five steps of our of every implementation. It's the, the same five steps that we do for all of them. But at the bottom of that slide is there's two arrows that go across everything. One is project management. The other is knowledge transfer. Um, you're, you're speaking a lot to the knowledge transfer part. And, and we definitely do want to have that involved. That way, you know, like you said, you, know, you may not be you know, the, the end all be all adaptive expert, but you're, you're going to know a heck of a lot to be dangerous, um, yeah. to, to own your own system. Um, after the implementation is done, we will help with the best practices. Oh, maybe don't look at it this way. Maybe think about, you know, have you thought about doing it this way instead? We've done this at other financial institutions and it's worked really well for them. Um, and then give you the tools that you need to, to, to go on your merry way. But obviously, always be here for uh, sure. for additional helping hand. And I know you've reached out to us a few times for some additional support and some enhancements as time has gone on. Yeah, we've had a couple of engagements since we've gotten the program onboarded, uh, one of which was the contribution to margin, the product profitability um, mm -hmm. a program that we have embedded into Adaptive now. So that was an engagement we did. Still working with you guys on that. In fact, had had a call with uh, <laughs> one of your engineers today, and we made a lot of good progress on one of the things we're trying to do. That, that's what I just appreciate about Adaptive and Rebel. What you can make it your own. There's not anyone using Adaptive the exact same way. There's yeah. everyone's going to be able to put their own fingerprint on the program. Where a lot of these solutions I've looked at in the past, you're kind of stuck with the out of box. Uh, out of the box uh, solution, right? And don't really have much control on how to customize it yeah. for yourself. And that's, that's like I say, that probably takes a little bit more work up front, but we're most definitely reaping the benefits of having that custom customized solution now. Sure. And it, it, it takes a little bit more work up front for sure, but it's definitely well worth the effort. You know, one of the things I see a lot of other partners, a lot of other tools they do as well is, you guys give us all your requirements, all your needs, your desires, and then we go back behind the scenes, close the curtain, we do all the work, and then come back to you when it's all done, pass it to you, and we're done. Uh, that's not how we want to do it right. because then you lose all that background knowledge, all the working knowledge, and it's a much more communal effort. You know, it, it's an iterative process, but it's intentionally iterative for that reason. Um I was actually talking to uh, Gary, who's one of our senior uh, consultants, uh, who was on your project, who's on your project, I should say. He always says, he goes, ah, oh, Texas Credit Union, they're, they're my favorite client of all time. <laughs> Hopefully there's no other clients of ours on this call, but uh, he, he always, always speaks your guys' praises. He, you know, he loves you guys, um, and as does Mary, some of the people who have been involved with that project, so yeah. that's been great. So. They're both great. Very good uh, trainers. I've, I've um, at my prior employer actually had took a, taken a class that Gary had taught um, okay. at one of the adaptive um, mm -hmm. conferences. And uh, I would say that's probably important if, if you're going to take on this solution is get a little bit of training, just enough to make you dangerous. Yeah. That way you can do some of the low hanging fruit type customization things yourself. And then when you have the big projects where you're where you don't have the time or the skill set that's when someone like Revelwood could could yeah. step in and really really help you out and give you a shot in the arm yeah absolutely and then the more people that you guys have on your side who have a working knowledge of the system should effectively make you guys be a little bit more efficient because then you're not going to have to bring on you know I would say in the old world if you had to add more bandwidth you had to bring on more FTEs to support that um, if you guys have the working knowledge of adaptive, you don't need to bring in the, the additional cost of more individuals. You can do more with the same group of people you have currently. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'd say um, our finance director and our our 
SVP controller and I are, are the ones who use the program the most. And uh, we're going just like probably everybody on the call right now. It's going, we're going through the 2024 budget process now. In fact, just got out of a meeting where we were meeting with our IT department and talking about the CapEx needs that they're going to have next year. Yeah. Uh, it was really nice that we were able to have that conversation. I was able to input the assumptions into adaptive as we were having those conversations and was able to kind of see what the effects of their asks are on our work in progress budget for 2024. Mm -hmm. um, just, it's just really nice just being able to have real time results based upon the, the real time conversations that we're having right then and there. Yeah. That, that, that helps the, the, you know, those individuals who, the stakeholders who are providing that budget information, they may be removed from the final output of it. So they may not even realize the impact of what their asks may be. This is a good way of, of working together with them to really show them in real time, you know, hey, you're asking for all these new fancy tools, all you know, this new equipment, blah, 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 blah. You know, here's what that means from the bottom line, balance sheet impact, everything like that. So yeah, that's definitely helpful. Um, for sure. So, you know, with that, with, you know, with those type of meetings, with the usage of adaptive, um, you know, what kind of feedback internally have you received as far as Texans Credit Union using adaptive since the implementation was completed? Yeah, I think all the stakeholders have been very pleased with, with the solution. Um, you know, number one is being able to give answers relatively quickly, specifically if it's from our executive team or our, our board of directors, if they're asking what's going to happen if this particular assumption is stressed, I can get back to them relatively quickly, if not right then. Uh, they most definitely see uh, a benefit there where in the past it was like, okay, I'll, I'll have that for you at our next board meeting or uh, I'll have that to you, you know, next week. Now it's more real-time answers. It's given, honestly, me a little bit of credibility as well. Um, as a CFO, you want to be able to give as much information to your team as possible, meaningful information, actionable information. And that's been, a, the, the solution has allowed me um, to do that. Uh, we use it a lot. Um, we use it for, we have a strategic planning session tomorrow with our board and did some scenarios uh, in our forecasting piece of, of, the, of adaptive to kind of show um, our board members what's possible, right? What's not possible? Uh, what happens if um, we go into recession? What happens if it's a soft landing? Uh, yeah. it, it's all these scenarios. I think that's probably what our board appreciates the most is like the way we do our budget is we have our baseline board approved budget and then I have what's called an optimistic scenario and then a pessimistic scenario and, pro and kind of provides them a range, right? In the past, with a series of Excel spreadsheets, I would have to replicate, replicate everything times three. And just you can't do that. With adaptive, it's it's real, real easy <laughs> to add uh, multiple scenarios to, to a baseline budget. Gotcha. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, just real quick, just for those in the audience, um, we are taking questions. So if anyone wants to have anything um, uh, suggested for questions, you can please use the Q&A option uh, and we'll definitely get get those questions answered for you if there, if there are any. Um, so, Ben, you know, now that you have, um, you know, the obviously the buy ins there, people are enjoying the system, the, the feedback has been positive. Um, what do you see as kind of your next steps in financial transformation in um, in the company, but also with adaptive? Yeah, so uh, really want to fine tune our income statements uh, per cost center. Uh, so the way that we brought in our financial information was at the cost center level. Right now, we're looking at most of our financials at an enterprise wide level, mm -hmm. uh, but we we have the framework and the bones to really be able to show, hey, this is the impact or the contribution to margin for this particular branch or this particular department. I, I stopped short on saying it's a way to use branch accounting, uh, but it is a way to where you can see how specific branches are performing uh, against one another. And that's probably something that we really want to kind of hone in and mature in 2024 and in 2025. Gotcha. And, and I think um, 
when we were chatting before um, about adaptive, you know, as, as much as you're using adaptive, you still feel that you're not using oh, like no. it's, it's yeah. full potential, correct? Yeah. I, I, to be honest, and I probably should have said this at the onset, <laughs> one reason why I, I, I did good look at a couple of other solutions, but the reason why I went with adaptive was, well, it was two. One, I had experience with it. Two, is it scalable? Um, we'll never have to find something else. I mean, adaptive will work for your largest organization that sure. they're known to man, right? Yeah. All the way down to, to a, you know, a smaller credit union or, or bank. Um, that That's what I really like about it. It's just, it's scalability. You're never going to outgrow it because it's going to adapt with you. Again, it's, yeah. it's in the name, adaptive. Yeah. It, it's yeah. gonna, you can change it to meet your needs. Awesome. Awesome. And when you, uh, when you went through the process of getting um, adaptive, initially did you have to go through any kind of business case with senior management to make the investment initially into adaptive yeah um fortunately for me no uh everyone knew it was a, a dire need uh they knew by the timeliness of answers we were providing whenever there was a, a financial question uh, on basically what if dot top questions it was it was mm -hmm. taking way too long um they knew that that was bothering me um, as a CFO. I want to be able to provide accurate information as quickly as possible. That way we can take advantage of, on, of any opportunity that comes our way. Right. And so um, I, I didn't have to be honest. I didn't have, it wasn't a hard sell for, right. for, for me. Everyone knew that we needed to mature this process, that having a series of complex Excel spreadsheet is not, mm -hmm. not scalable. Um, we're in growth mode and, we need to have tools that's going to allow us to grow. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. That, you know, sometimes the the CFO, if the CFO realizes there's a need for something like this, that's that's probably a good enough use uh, business case. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and so, um, what do you think is um, what do you like most, or what do you find most useful? You know, about adapt. I know you said the scalability and things like that, but. Uh, what specific component do you think is kind of like the, the thing you like most about it? Yeah, I like the insights I get in. in I think I mentioned earlier, like the way I like to use it is I like to have three or four instances open and then I can <laughs> tweak one sheet or one assumption. Right. And I can immediately see what's happening to the balance sheet and income statement or what's happening to some of our, our KPIs just by tweaking one one assumption. Like I'm, I can I can see all that at once. That's really important to me. Uh, also, to be able to like just create visuals on the fly real quickly to show the impact um, that a tweak to an assumption is going to have. I think that's really, really important. Um, the, the way we kind of use the solution is that we also use it to kind of recast the budget every month. Mm -hmm. um, we load in actual performance, right? And then um, we demonstrate our actual performance compared to uh, what we had budgeted for, but then we also have what's called the forecast. So it's like, well, what happens if the budget materializes perfectly for the rest of the year? Where are we going to land? Um, I think our stakeholders like seeing how that forecasted line for whatever metric, we do it for all of our metrics, but for whatever metric that is, they'd like to see, is that forecast going up or down from what it said last month? Um, just so you can kind of see what the trajectory of, is for all of our, our KPIs. But mm. uh, those are a few of the reasons why I really like adaptive outside of the scalability and the yeah. ease of use. Yeah. And yeah, one of the things I'm, I'm not sure how often you keep up with the, uh, the uh, quarterly releases that adaptive does with updates, but one of the upcoming ones you know, just re reminded me when you're saying about the, the scenarios is um there's going to be a new, a new concept of personal scenarios where you can actually create, you know, Dave's or Ben's version of budget 2024 final. And even if it is a final budget, you can then create a copy of that just for your user in adaptive where no one else can see it. So yeah. Ben can create his own special unique use case version and Dave can have his separate one. Um, yeah, that that that's a, a new enhancement that Adaptive has, and Adaptive has enhancements that come out major releases twice a year. Um, that's because one of the ones that be coming out in the in the very near future. So, 
Um, good. Um, so what about adaptive specifically do you think makes it a good solution for credit unions uh, themselves specifically? Yeah. Um, for credit unions themselves, um, I know I have leaned on the solution a lot with this rising rate environment. Um, if, if It'll be kind of kind of hard to explain if you've never used adaptive before, but I'll kind of I'll, I'll try my best. One sure. thing I like a lot about it is I can see actual performance. So, for example, how are our yields on, say, auto loans trending? I can see those front and center and see what the trend is. And then I can, in that same spot, adjust an assumption mm -hmm. to really fine tune where I think it's going. It's a forecast or a budget. Um, I think it's been very helpful in this rising rate environment to be able to see that and be able to plan for the effects of a higher rate environment. Um, so that that's what I would say specific for credit unions. But I'd, I'd also say the program, what I was surprised, I went to an Adaptive Insights conference a few years ago. I was, I was really surprised at how many just private sector businesses use use the solution so I, I don't think it's made just for fis i think it's made yeah. for any any organization that's trying to buy something and sell something you know and <laughs> how, how does that gonna how is our long-term viability impacted by the current trends right right yeah i i always use uh you know the joke when when i talk to clients about fpna is fpna whether you're a credit union a bank a uh, you know, a manufacturer, healthcare, hospital system, still, it's still numbers, right? And yeah. the numbers, you know, as long as we can make sense of the numbers and build them out correctly, then we'll, we can get your implementation completed and no problem. So, um, so uh, last question I have for you, Ben, today is, um, you know, why did you decide to work with an external consulting firm uh, for this implementation? Yeah, um, you know, one one's bandwidth. Um, just needed a shot in the arm to really get the solution up and running, so we could use we could use it for the 2023 budget cycle. Um, the other one is just a higher level of expertise. I mean, a company like Revelwood is in the solution all day, every day. They have employees who's been in the solution for you know 10, 15 years. They can apply their own creativity. Uh, to the solution as they're building out the, the the program in a much better way than we could have internally. We just probably need a higher level of expertise uh, to get it onboarded. Um, that's the biggest reason why we had to engage with the outside party. I mean, it can be done internally, um, but it, it just, I don't know, but just more so than anything, I just needed it real quick <laughs> and didn't have the <laughs> bandwidth to build it out ourselves. Sure. Awesome. And we're obviously we're, we were more than happy to help you out with that. Yeah, yeah. It's been, it's great been job. A, been a great relationship since the get go. So it's, it's been awesome. It's been awesome. Well, so Ben, thank you so much for your for your time today. For those in the audience, thank you for joining us as well. Uh, before I close out, Ben, any last comments, thoughts from you? Any questions from you, Ben? Um, no, I, I, as I mentioned, I think it's a great solution. I'm a big cheerleader for adaptive. Um, I we're going to grow with it. I don't foresee us ever outgrowing adaptive. Um, yeah. That's what I like most about it. It's just the scalability that it comes. It's, it's painful to onboard any solution, right? So yeah. you want to, you want to partner with a solution that's going to last you for a really long time. And that's where I, that's what I think we have with, with the adaptive solution. Awesome. Thanks so much, Ben. And for those, uh, if there are any questions from the audience or any follow-ups, you know, please feel free to reach out to us at info at rubblewood.com. We'd be more than happy to follow up with you guys uh, there. Uh, so, Ben, thank you, thanks again so much for your time today, and uh, have a great rest of your Thursday. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Good to talk to you again, man. Thank you. Have a good one. Right, see you. Go Cowboys. Uh, go Birds. <laughs>